Good afternoon, everyone, and a huge welcome to a special anniversary uh, edition of the UCD Institute for Discovery's Zoom for Thought series. My name is Scott Rickard, and today we will be turning the tables on Patricia, and I will be interviewing her. For those who don't know me, I am an adjunct professor at UCD, and many moons ago, I was the director of the UCD Castle, which has evolved many years later into the Institute for Discovery. It will be the same format as always, with a five-minute chat with our guest, and then we will open it to the floor for a Q&A. So please do remember to submit your questions via the chat function at the bottom of your screens, and let's kick off. Uh, so today I have the great pleasure of speaking with Professor Patricia McGuire. She is Professor of Biomedical Science at UCD and of course the Director of the UCD uh, Institute for, uh, for Discovery. Uh, today we will chat about providing a compass, not a map, cultivating interdisciplinary research. Hi Patricia, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Scott. Uh, thank you so much. It's a real honor to be sitting on this side of the table for today. <laughs> well, I'm hoping sitting at this side of the table uh, is, is not as difficult as it, as it, as it looks because you always do an amazing job on this side. So uh, please do submit your questions via the Zoom for Thought Q&A. Uh, the first question for you, Patricia, is where are you located and what has been keeping you sane for the last few months of lockdown? Well, I am located, Scott, in Dublin, very close to UCD. And uh, what's been keeping me sane? Well, in March 2020, I have three daughters, and one of my daughters planted chili seeds from a supermarket, Chili. And we have been tending to them every day as a family. And now, uh, a year and a half later, we have 10 fully grown chili plants in the kitchen, taking up lots of room. Everybody's tripping over them. Uh, and we've got about 20 chilies growing and we're waiting for them all to turn red so that we can literally make our own homegrown uh, red curry paste. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, and our audience knows you well as our Zoom for Thought host each week, but you have many titles. You are Professor of Biomedical Science and Director of the UCD Institute for Discovery, Science Foundation Ireland Mentorship Awardee, a founding member of the UCD Women in the Sciences, uh, UCD WITS Committee, to name a few. Can you please tell our audience about your research and what makes you so passionate about what you do? I'd be delighted, Scott. So I study blood. And specifically, I study a blood cell called platelets. Now, everyone's probably already heard about these platelets and that they clot your blood. But uh, I like to think that they really do so much more. And as they circulate round in our bodies, in our blood, they collect up information in real time. And in my lab, we use this power of the platelets to sense the environment, to uh, better get a better understanding of diseases. And we're working on diseases like multiple sclerosis, like organ rejection, and also COVID-19. But we're also using platelets to find new diagnostics. And we're doing this in a pregnancy disorder called preeclampsia. So why are we working on preeclampsia? Well, preeclampsia actually affects one in every 10 pregnancies. And every year, about six hundred people or 600,000 people, mothers and babies around the world die of preeclampsia complications. And uh, the reason we're looking at new diagnostics is preeclampsia is really difficult to diagnose. In fact, we are still using the same way to diagnose preeclampsia as we did 200 years ago, which is high blood pressure and protein in the urine. Um, and what we've done is we've developed a new, really simple blood test. And when this is combined with artificial intelligence, we can better predict preeclampsia. And we're right now we're testing that in the three Dublin maternity hospitals. That's amazing. It's an amazing uh, phrase you use there that the, the platelets collect information. And I never thought of the... Uh, of the, 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 I guess the blood system as an information or even, even the human system as an information collection device other than the brain. Um, but I'd, I'd like to have a follow-up question um, when we get to the Q&A. Love to, um, because actually platelets are, yeah. are known as the brains of your blood, but there you go. I'll, I'll talk more about that later. <laughs> but moving on to your title, providing a compass, not a map, mm -hmm. cultivating interdisciplinary research. Uh, what does that title mean? Okay, so I, I suppose I have to start with what our mission is in UCD Discovery. So our mission in Discovery is to cultivate an interdisciplinary community, a research community across UCD. And I suppose everyone is gonna ask, what is interdisciplinarity? Well, in a nutshell, it is combining information from multiple disciplines to advance knowledge and to solve problems. And in UCD Discovery, we encourage researchers to basically think differently. We want them to realize that great things can happen at, at the boundaries of disciplines. And uh, this is why I say 
provide a compass rather than a map. So what we're trying to do is provide a direction for researchers to move in really uncharted territories, uncharted waters, where no one really knows the answers to the questions. And how do we do this? Well, we connect people and we partner with you, whether you're a junior researcher, whether you're a full professor, whether you're in industry, in a multinational industry, whether you're in an NGO or an SME, we will partner with you and we will facilitate you and help you drive forward your blue sky thinking. For example, we recently launched the AI Healthcare Hub, and we did this um, with a company called uh, SAS Institute, which is a global leader in data analytics. And our mission in this hub is really uh, to give all researchers in UCD a chance to use uh, powerful machine learning technologies to make dr data driven decisions about their research. And I suppose in a way what we're trying to do is democratize artificial intelligence and um, We've already seen, I suppose, the fruits of our labor on this uh, since we've launched this about a year ago. So already we have researchers in the hub that have developed a new algorithm uh, for uh, looking at severity of COVID-19, uh, predicting severity of COVID-19 patients the day they, they get admitted into hospital. Very interesting. Uh, very interesting about, about uh, research outside the boundaries of, of the established uh, disciplines. Uh, and that's, you know, obviously you can't, you can't have a map for, for, for undiscovered things yet where you don't even know uh, not only what the answers are, but in some cases what the questions are. So very interesting. Uh, and I guess just to, to wrap up here, uh, what, uh, why is interdisciplinary research so important? I know you just touched on this a little bit, but yeah. why is it important? I touched on it, but, but really, why is it important? And if you think about the world, the world isn't just neatly divided up into its disciplines. Uh, you know, uh, we need to be able to combine information in a really interdisciplinary way to help solve, you know, the real problems in the world today, like climate change, like improving quality of life for people with chronic diseases. And I really think it's really important uh, to be able to embrace new technologies but also to be able to merge different disciplines. And I, I suppose a real passion of mine is to be able to um, merge disciplines like the arts with the sciences. And, and here's, you know, I was trying to think of some kind of examples, really quick examples, but some incredible examples is to use um, choral singing to improve mental health. They've used choral singing to improve quality of life in patients with dementia. Uh, used uh, dancing, actually specifically ballet, to improve coordination in people with uh, Parkinson's disease. So, you know, these kinds of cross fields thinking can really make uh, huge leaps and can really impact on people's lives. And I suppose, you know, for our audience today, if you think about it, the most famous um, uh, interdisciplinary researcher was obviously the Renaissance polymath, uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, he was the real first to think about these things. And actually, we celebrated his, uh, the 500 year of his death, uh, the 500 year of the anniversary of his death uh, in UCD just before lockdown in the end of 2019. But really, that was a time, the Renaissance, I suppose, was a time when one individual could make these profound discoveries um, in multiple fields. But now, really, now, um, you need partnerships to do this. and. Um, and, and that's why in UCD Discovery, we are very delighted to be part of this global network of advanced studies, this UBIAS network. And what UBIAS does is it drives forward partnerships for interdisciplinary research, basically on a global stage. And hopefully we can together solve these global problems. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting about Da Vinci. Uh, yeah, I think Da Vinci probably was the last time when uh, one person could make profound discoveries in many different disciplines. Right now, uh, even within within mathematics or computer science, you know, one subdiscipline can barely speak to another subdiscipline because it, have, it requires you know a decade of of of, of uh, deep research and study uh, in order to become an expert. Um, yeah, that definitely highlights uh, why interdisciplinary research is is so important. Um, so the first question here, uh, and I do want to come back to the plate that says information processors, um, but is how did you come up with the idea for Zoom for Thought? Uh, yeah, um, well, we have a, I can't just take credit for myself, we have an absolutely wonderful team in Discovery, and I suppose our bread and butter prior to uh, COVID-19, prior to the pandemic, was to do events. 
um, and we used to run a lot of events and 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 our, our uh, big thing was to connect people so you know at the beginning of the pandemic we we were how do we do this and how do we translate this online so this kind of magic that we had created online um, and we also wanted to think about our audience, uh, and not just our audience, but our guests as well. You know, we wanted something bite-sized because we really value everyone's time. And that's when I suppose April, it was April 2020 when Zoom for Thought was born. And it was this, obviously everybody knows it's this short um, snap, uh, snapshot of speakers' lives. And what we modeled it on was actually a TED talk, um, but mm. obviously in uh, the, the Zoom format in our new virtual world. And uh, I suppose what we found since we've launched this is that there's a real appetite for knowledge um, in our audience um, during this pandemic. And, and, and I have to say thank you because we've really built up a real loyal following in our audience um, over this time. And we, we've had week to week, you know, really high numbers, people who are really hungry for uh, you know, new information. And we wanted to say a huge thanks to them. Uh, and I want to say a huge thanks to them. And of course, at the same time, I have been incredibly privileged to speak to some of the most incredible academic and industry leaders uh, from around the world. So it's been amazing. Yeah, I like the idea as a Zoom for Thought as a lightweight TED. Um, so the questions are flooding in and now uh, I do uh, admire you even more for your ability to field all these uh, and select um, on the fly here. Here's a good question. Has your research been delayed much by restricted lab access or by a diversion of resources to frontline workers during the pandemic? You know, actually, it's been really interesting because uh, at the beginning, everything stopped. But then actually, because platelets are so involved in this information collection in the blood, and probably most people know on this call that, you know, there's been a, a whole thing involved in clotting and COVID. Um, we actually, uh, we actually were busier than ever. So my and my lab were incredible. And, um, uh, you know, they were in the Matter Hospital collecting blood samples and working on uh, blood samples of COVID. COVID patients trying to understand COVID because we felt we had I suppose this interdisciplinary knowledge that we could bring to understand this new new disease in the world so um, and uh, we've had quite a large success in that area we've we've uh, you know shown that uh, uh, pl how platelets uh, are, are overreactive, they're kind of hyperreactive in this disease. And uh, we're just trying to, I suppose, we're, we're really trying to dig deep and understand and use our knowledge to understand platelets. So actually, we've kind of never been busier. So interesting. Great. Uh, so great questions coming in here. Uh, and following on from our discussion around interdisciplinary collaborations, as, a, as science has developed, we have created very deep silos of expertise in every discipline and perhaps reduced the knowledge experts have of other disciplines. Is this an issue for interdisciplinary collabor collaboration? Yeah, so so this is something I get asked a lot. So, you know, I think you need to be, we need experts who dig deep into particular disciplines. But we, I think we really need to work together. And, and so it's, it's a balance between the two. And I think, you know, with the new, the way the funding is going now in, in research funding, not just in, in Europe, but in Ireland as well, with uh, Science Foundation Ireland, and we had Ruth Freeman on last week, you know, talking about challenge funding and, you know, trying to solve these challenges of today like climate change like uh, so the big societal challenges we need groups of people to come together either in a multidisciplinary or an interdisciplinary way you know it's i, I think we need both um, and and we won't be able to uh, you know make these massive leaps otherwise and then uh, a follow on question, uh, perfectly um, placed here, uh, with the possibility of in-person encounters limited in our current global situation, what do you see as the main challenge of creating interdisciplinary connections? Yeah, that's why we're running this Zoom for Thought, so we can get people together, share information, and keep bringing people together. And, and, and you know, actually, um, it's been really interesting. I actually think that 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 this medium that we're on now, Zoom has actually incredibly accelerated some other projects that I'm involved in. I, I'm, I'm um, involved in an, a, SF, a Science Foundation challenge fund myself. So it's it's one of the AI for societal goods, it's the preeclampsia project. And actually, you know, we've got uh, busy clinicians from the three Dublin maternity hospitals, but we all managed to meet at 4 p.m. on a Tuesday 
and we've done so right throughout the pandemic, people even on the Lewis, it doesn't matter, Zoom actually has made it accessible. So actually, I think, you know, these technology advancements have helped drive forward interdisciplinary research. Yeah, I really think so. We're, we're already slightly over time, but I do have two uh, two quick questions. I did want to no, follow it up. Goes very fast, Scott. Can, you, <laughs> can you speak for, uh, for 30 seconds on uh, what information are the platelets processing? Ah, yeah. Okay, this is really, so I could speak forever on this because this is my real passion. I have lots of passions. This is my real passion. So actually platelets are born in the bone marrow. So they get made in your bone marrow and actually they sense the environment there. And this is really key. And we've understood that this is really key. If I look at the cancer research, so I, I love to eat up research from lots of different fields. So the cancer research shows that the environment in the bone marrow is really important. So these platelets are born into that in, an environment and they're constantly being made day in, day out. And then they swim around in our blood and they constantly take in information. And actually we've known this since the 1960s, but we haven't known the significance of it until now. And, and so we've used technology, if you like, to reinvent how to find diagnostics in the blood. And so that's a whole area of we've, I suppose that's what I've really dedicated my, my, and my lab has dedicated our last number of years to do. So there's a whole interdisciplinary team of clinicians, um, scientists, statisticians, machine learning experts that have all come together now. And, and it's really amazing. And I, I learn such amazing new things every day. But yeah, platelets are incredible. And, and watch this space, I suppose. All right, I look forward to hearing more. Um, so final question, um, who was your favorite guest on Zoom for Thought? And you don't have to answer me. I was on 38 <laughs> episodes ago. I, I've, I've actually watched every single episode. I've been uh, live, um, but um, uh, and uh, what was your favorite Zoom for Thought moment? Oh yeah, okay, so um, I'll try and be quick. So I'll ask it the second one first. So my favorite Zoom for Thought moment, and I don't know if Portrick Dunn is on today, but it was Portrick Dunn. And it was, um, and we were talking about, so Professor Portrick Dunn, he's from UCD Physics, but he's also kind of leading out on the next phase of the Science Center. And he was asked, and I, I suppose I put the question to him, he was asked about this, the new offices in the Science Center and being the, you know, being the same size as the cells in Mount Joy. And, you know, he didn't even, <laughs> It was brilliant. He didn't even flinch. And afterwards, he told me he was even thinking of breaking into song. So, you know, it's lovely. It's just to see people and how they react. It's just, it's been a real privilege and an honor. Um, my favorite guest, uh, you, of course, Scott, but also I got to interview my absolute scientific hero, Eric uh, Toppel. Uh, he's just an incredible global leader. If you don't know him, look him up. But I have to say, and, and I kind of want to close on this, my favorite, favorite guest has been the audience. And in particular, I want to give a shout out to um, the, uh, the Bach brothers that are on every week. And, and it's a de real delight. To, I watch them, the, the Jay Bach brothers. <laughs> Not only are they named after one of my all time favorite composers, so I adore classical music. Uh, they are uh, here each week. They are engaged. I feel I know them, they've all, all got their camera on and it's a real delight to see them. And I really hope someday we can meet in person uh, in UC, in our amazing facilities in the UCD Science Center and UCD Discovery. So they're, that's, that's, right. they're my favorite yeah. guests. I, I agree with you about the Bach brothers. I'm not sure if they're, they're brothers, but they're I do. On now. I, I, they, have, <laughs> they have the video on every, every week and uh, it's great to see them nodding along. So yeah. shout out to them. Yeah, and, big uh, shout out to them. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Patricia. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Take care.